linear programming, um, which is the process of using a system of inequalities to figure out maximum profit or minimum cost. We're going to use Legos to model the production in a furniture factory. The company only produces tables and chairs. A table consists of two large and two small Legos. You can see what that looks like right there. And a chair consists of one large and two small pieces. Um, as we've discussed earlier, it's very helpful to, as you're going along, to underline things um, that you think are going to be important that you're going to use later. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that a table is two large and two small pieces, a chair, one large and two small. When determining the, the optimal production plan, you, the manufacturer, must take into account there are only six large and eight small pieces available. So you only have a certain amount of Legos to build these. The profit from each table is $16. The profit from each chair is 10 the production manager wants to find the production rate of tables and chairs per day that earns the most profit. Production rate refers to the number of tables and chairs this company can produce per day. So I'm going to hand out Legos. Everyone's going to try building. With this combination of six large and eight small pieces, how many different ways can you make tables and chairs? We're going to write them down and figure out what is the revenue or the total profit of those combinations. So, for example, you could build one table and one chair. It doesn't use all the pieces, but you could do that. And then to figure out the cost, it's $16, not the cost, the, the profit. It's $16 profit per table and it's $10 profit per chair and so if you only made one of each your profit would be $26. As we play around you find that oh you could build how about zero tables but if you did zero tables you could make four chairs and so let's calculate the profit on that you'd have zero tables at $16 and four chairs at $10 so that profit would actually be $40. So we're going to play around with what are the different combinations you can make and calculate the profit against $16 per table, $10 per chair um, to find the revenue. So then we'll go over well which combination would produce the most revenue. Part two, it says the process we use with Legos, it wasn't very efficient. If we have 900 large blocks and 1,350 small blocks, we would not want to find every combination by just building them, brute force. It would take forever. Now we're going to look for a faster way to find the maximum revenue using our amazing math skills. So number one, how many variables do you think that we'll need? So what are the things that we're building here? We're building tables and chairs. So I'm going to call x the number of tables. I'll call y the number of chairs. Okay, so we've been practicing defining variables. That's what it's asking for. To algebraic, algebraically represent the constraints of the problem, do you think we should use equations or inequalities and why? And if you take a look, we have more than one answer that works. And whenever there's more than one solution, um, you're going to use inequalities to re represent that. Um, constraints, vocab word. Constraints are limitations created by scarce resources, oftentimes time, equipment, in this case our constraints are the number of Legos that we have. They are expressed algebraically by inequalities in terms of the decision variables. All right, so this is telling us, hey, we're going to use inequalities to represent um, what we have here. So it's very helpful, I think, when we're doing linear programming to make a table. In the table, you put the constraints on the sides. So here we have two constraints that we're looking at. Whoops. And those are the large and the small Legos. And then I like to put the variables on the top. So in this case, we're talking about tables, which we're calling X, and chairs, which we're calling Y. You can use other variables for your constraints, but X and Y will make it easier to graph. All right, let's write up the constraints on a table. So if you think back, in a table, how many large pieces did we need? We needed two large and two small pieces for every table. So now we're going to write that in our inequality. Two large pieces for every table. Oh, and I guess we have to look at a chair. How many large pieces for a chair? There's one large large piece for every chair. So, two, so if we're looking at just the large pieces, two large pieces for every table, one large piece for every chair, and the number of pieces that we, we, all, that we had for um, the large pieces, we only had six large pieces. So what we use has to be less than or equal to six. Let's take a look at, for building um, a table, the small pieces. You need two small pieces for every table, and I think it was two small pieces for the chairs as well, yep. So two small pieces for every chair. And we had eight small pieces, so what we used to be less than or equal to eight. So these are our two of the four constraints that we need. So if I write this up, 2x plus 1y, this is the large pieces less than or equal to six. For the small pieces, 2x plus 8y, 2y is less than or equal to eight. 
And then there's two common sense constraints, which is like we, we can't have negative. We can use zero Legos, but we can't use negative Legos. So the number of... Um, Okay, so this is Lego, sorry. This is the number of tables and chairs. We can't have negative tables and negative chairs. So if I want to say can't have negative chairs, Y has to be greater than or equal to zero. You can have zero chairs or bigger. And X has to be greater than or equal to zero. So these, again, are called the common sense constraints. And they'll help us build our graph. Because if you look at our graph, we don't have any negative numbers. Whoops. Okay, so now... It says graph your system of inequalities on the next page. You can use the cover-up method or solve for y and use the slope and y-intercept. So again, we've been looking at how can you graph an inequality. You can get y by itself, slope and y-intercept, or if it's in standard form, if x and y are on the same side, we can use the cover-up method. So that's what I'm going to use. So let's look at the first inequality first. 2x plus 1y is less than or equal to 6. Let's cover one up and solve. Okay, so I'll use blue. So let's say we cover up the y. So if y equals 0, we can say, all right, then 2x would be 6. Divide by 2. So x would be 3 if y is 0. So that would be one point in our inequality. All right, let's cover up the 2x. And then we would say, all right, then y equals 6. And then we're already done with that. So two points help, helps us draw the line for the inequality. Whoops. <laughs> uh, um, so we're done with the first inequality. Let's take a look at the second inequality. Um, 2x plus 2y is less than or equal to 8. Again, use the cover-up method to solve. So let's cover up, I don't know, the y first. We have 2x equals 8, divide by 2, so x equals 4. Let's cover up, oh, this new update. <laughs> I can never get the eraser. All right, um, let's cover up the x value, and we have 2y equals 8. We'll solve that, and we'll get y equals 4. Now, we, we like to solve these before we graph it. In case we have to scale our graph, we can see right, what would be a good scale to use so that we can graph these points. And so we know that our y value should at least go up to 6 and our x value should at least go up to 4. Luckily, our graph is scaled for us here, so we don't even have to think about that. Um, but let's label what everything stands for. So if you remember, x um, was the number of tables and y was the number of chairs. All right, so let's graph these. So the first one I'll graph was the large Legos. X is 3, Y is 6. We're going to use a solid line because you can see the equal sign there in the inequality, which means the answer would be on this line. And then we have to pick a point, test, and shade. So for plugging in 0, 0 is a pretty easy point to test. If it's not on your um, line, it's not. So we test is 0 plus 0. Is that less than or equal to 6? And it is. So We'll shade below the line because 0, 0 is right here below the line. Do the same thing for our second inequality. Um, so we'll graph our points, 4 and 4. x is 4, y is 4. Go ahead and draw our line, but much straighter than that. OK. And pick a point, test, and shade, like 0, 0. Is 0 plus 0 less than or equal to 8? And that's true. And again, 0, 0 is below the line, so we'll shade below the line in the double shaded area. And we can see all our answers are going to be on the line, or and this is where they meet. So on this line of the double shaded area, or inside this, these are where, where all, our, all our answers are. And that's called the feasible region, the area containing all the points that satisfy the number of constraints and in this case like how many um, Legos we need to build the tables and chairs so all these combinations in the red area and on the line on the red line would work for building the number number of tables and chairs so that's the feasible region you can build those um, so for find the vertices of the feasible region those are the corner points so if we take a look one of the corners is zero zero one of them is zero four one is two two and the last corner point is uh, 3, 0. Now there's this thing right here, the corner principle, that says, okay, these are all answers to the graph, but the optimal solution will always line a, 
lie on a corner of the feasible region. What that means is one of these combinations of tables and chairs will give us the optimal solution or the maximum profit. So in order to figure out which one gives us maximum profit, we have to plug into the objective function or the profit equation. And what that means is for the profit, how much was it for every table and every chair? So if we forget, we can look back. We can see that it was... Um, $16 per table, $10 per chair. So that's our profit equation, $16 per table plus $10 per chair. We actually already plugged into it when we did our work here earlier. There was the profit equation. So our goal to figure out which one of these would be the best combination of tables and chairs to make, we're going to plug into the profit equation, the objective function, and see which one gives us maximum profit. So that's the last step. So we're kind of combining these two steps, 4 and 5 right here, and we're going to plug into 0, 0 first. So if you make uh, zero tables at $16 a table and zero chairs at $10 a chair, that profit would be $0. So we would not want to make zero of each if we want a maximum profit. Let's test the point 0, 4. So what if we made zero tables and four chairs? So it would be $16 for zero tables plus $10 for four chairs. We can see that that profit would be $40. I think that was one that we tested before. Okay, let's pick another color. Let's test what if we made two tables and two chairs. So the profit off two tables and two chairs would be $16 for two tables plus $10 for two chairs. And that profit would be, let's see, $16 times 32 plus 20 would be $52. All right, so right now that's looking like it's maximum profit, two tables and two chairs. But let's test what if we made three running out of colors here. Three tables and zero chairs. So the profit off three tables and zero chairs is 16 times 3 plus 10 times 0, which is 48. Okay, so this is telling us like the corner that gave us the maximum profit is this combination right here, which is two tables and two chairs. So it says find the combination that will maximize our profit, two tables, two chairs, We'll maximize our profit at $52. I'll write that up. Two tables and two chairs. So that's our goal really is how can we use linear programming or these systems of inequalities to graph it? Find the feasible region, look at the corners, and then plug into the equation to find maximum profit. So your assignment will be one more of these problem problems, and then we'll take a look at more review tomorrow.